to Married at First Sight, Season 15, Episode 3. Uh, this is for San Diego, Married at First Sight, San Diego. And this video uh, is for Lindy and Miguel. I do separate videos on all the different couples. So if you're new here, at the end of this video, there will be a link above my head and you can click on it and watch the other couples. But you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, I am so excited about this couple. I can't believe when I had my very first impression before the wedding, before we really got to meet them, I was like, oh, no way this couple's going to make it. The way that they were describing Lindy, the way the friends were describing Lindy, I thought she was going to be a walking train wreck. I thought the two of them wouldn't make it at all. But last week and now this week, oh no, I'm two feet in on this cover. I love them and I really like Lindy. I'm starting to realize, and I may be wrong, I may still be too early to be saying this, but um, did people say that Lindy was too much in her feelings because she's such an open book? It's one of the things I'm really liking about Lindy. I like that Lindy is so a positive that she actually speaks from the heart. Have we become to the point where we're so used to guarded women who don't really let their vulnerabilities come through, that they don't really expose themselves, that now when they do, we call those women over-emotional? Because I'm not seeing anything with Lindy right now where Lindy is over-emotional. In fact, I think she definitely does have a very strong emotional side, but what happens is she's able to speak her truth. She's able to speak from her heart with, without being scared, scared of getting hurt and all these other kind of things. And I love it. She's just so positive. She just she just says such nice things. And I really, me personally, I like being around people who speak positively. I mean, even in the beginning of this wedding, she was talking about how the wedding was so beautiful. The venue was so beautiful. This whole episode, she's talking about this is one of the best days of her life. I mean, she just has glowing, glowing, glowing re remarks about Miguel. Because Miguel is cute, y'all. Miguel is hot. He's really sexy. He really does have that little Latino sexy flair going to him. Um, Lindy better hold on to him. Because I'm telling you, if she puts him back on the street, if she throws that fish back in the water, uh, there's going to be a lot of women fishing for him. Uh, he's smart. He's a doctor. He's intellectual. He's kind. He's caring. And he's cute. Um, I'm liking it. I'm even liking the nerdy side of Miguel as well. Lindy said when she first saw him come down the aisle, she said he had on a little uh, fashion forward suit. I mean, she put some nice words on and she was like fashion forward. But we knew what she was saying. That suit was flashy. Like I said, he looked like a Vegas showrunner. But she was like, oh, forget about that. Because when she looked up and saw um, his face, she was like, oh, okay, everything's just fine. Everything is just fine. And you know, she turned on, he turned on too by two doctors in the house. Two doctors, two degree doctors in the house. Um, let me tell you, uh, that is a check mark. I'm quite sure that um, during the course of her life or his course of his life, going to PhD work and her going to medical school, um, the idea of marrying another doctor, she probably thought maybe that wouldn't happen. But here she is marrying a stranger, no less, and he ended up being a doctor too. I really think that these two are going to match each other intellectually because I think that was what was missing from Miguel. When Miguel kept running from these relationships, when Miguel kept ending these relationships, when Miguel would be with one for two years, four years, five years, what that was telling me was it was something about it that he wasn't being able to stick with. And to be honest with you, I think he was miss missing intellectual compatibility. I really do believe that. He might have been physically attracted to those women. He might have even had uh, other things, but those things wane over time. Physical wanes over time. Lots of superficial things wane over time. And in the end, I think he was left with a lot, not a lot of physical compatibility. And that's probably why he's over here doing Dungeons and Dragons, because he would be getting bored with these women and he got to go off and play um, video games. I think Lindy is going to hold his attention and conversation and everything else. The, them Dungeons and Dragons people, they, gonna, might lose, they might lose a game player. They might lose a gamer because I have a feeling that um, Miguel is going to be all into Lindy and he ain't going to be playing them games as much as he used to. But he really liked her. He's talked about um, he going to have to be on his A game because ain't no way he wants to lose her. I love a motivated man. Last week, um, I told you that Nate was motivated. I love that about him. Now we're seeing right now that Miguel is motivated. We already know Justin is motivated. I love motivated men because that means they're going to work hard for your love. And I love it. I love how he was caring for Lindy when Lindy was getting up on there talking about um, she doesn't know how to dance. She doesn't know how to dance. First of all, Lindy ain't no church girl no more. She needs to stop talking about this church thing. 
We already showed her in the previews where she had a refrigerator full of alcohol. Lenny ain't a church girl no more. She's trying to leave with this church girl stuff. Uh, but that ain't it. I'm not believing that no more either. All this sheltered life she talked about. Girl, your life wasn't so sheltered. And now we come to find out um, your life was no more sheltered than Miguel's was. He ain't running around there talking about his. Even Miguel's sister was talking about the trauma that they had and the upbringing they had. Uh, Lindy's story pales in comparison, I believe, to probably what Miguel's story is. It probably pales. She's going to start to sound stupid when she seems talking about how she was sheltered when she really starts learning about Miguel. I think she's going to end up dropping that storyline because she's going to feel foolish. But she playing a good job. I don't know how to dance. Where do I put my hands? Girl, we know you a freak in the bed, a freak in the sheets. She up here playing this game real, real. I don't know where to put my hands. Girl, you know how to, where to put them hands. Because, you know, even during the wedding, that family over there drilling Miguel about, you know, is he a Christian or does he believe in a higher purpose? And then five minutes later, they're talking about, um, are you guys going to ask tonight? Ah, what the heck is going on with these Christians these days? Let me tell you, they over here playing uh, games. I know when they were doing that dance, Miguel was like, I don't want to tell you, I, I don't have to tell you pretty. You already know you pretty. And you know when I was Lindy, uh, you need to tell me that on my wedding day, you need to give me some compliments. In fact, I tell my husband, uh, anytime I take longer than 15 minutes to get ready, you need to give me a compliment, period. I want some compliments too. And you know, that's why I didn't like about Mitch and, Mitch and um, Kristen's wedding. He didn't give her not one compliment the whole night, not a one. But Miguel was on the after party. You'll have to watch my video on that. He says he does regret doing that. He says he regrets saying that he didn't need to give his wife a compliment. He said it was probably the, one of the dumbest things he's done. And I like that about him. But he was on the after party as well. Still looking good, y'all. Looking cute. But Lenny started turning the charm. She was like, do you speak Spanish? And he started talking in Spanish to her. She was like, ah, rico suave. All right, I like it. A girl, well, Lenny talking about she a church girl. She ain't a church girl no more. She already said he was. Her panties already down, darn near down in her ankles already. In fact, when they had that little garter, kicking off the garter, she was like, you know, I don't have a no, uh, oh, I mean shoes. Girl, Lenny know what she's doing. She knows exactly what she's doing. And Miguel told the story on the after party that one of the things that happened at the wedding was that they forgot to give Lindy a garter. So he actually had to use his bow tie as the garter and take that off. I thought that was so cute. He just cares for her. He's so attentive to her. I just love it. And she's up here soaking it up. She playing this little innocent girl. We know she a freak in the sheets. We know Lindy a freak in the sheets. But Lindy said she a fan girl. She was holding up a little sign or whatever with his picture on the kids. Talking about she a fan girl, Miguel. I know you are. I know you, friend. She was crushing on him. Even that friend of her was talking about, oh, you know, Puerto Ricans are good in the bed. Uh, are these all these church people talking about sex the whole night long? What is going on? But but Lindy was over there just giggling, 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 giggling. I wouldn't be surprised if these two uh, bump and grind on honeymoon night. Because let me tell you, Lindy is hot and horny, and I could feel the energy coming from these two. I really can. But, but, but Miguel's sister was trying to tell Lindy, you know, um, Miguel ain't perfect. He got some uh, skeletons in his closet. He's got some demons from his past. He's got some past trauma. And Lindy was like, oh, I ain't scared of that. Shoot, we're going to be trauma bonding then. <laughs> I still think that Lindy's trauma she was talking about is over-exaggerated. I really do. I don't know. Besides not knowing how to dance and you can't be hugged up on no guy in high school, she really hasn't told me anything that makes me think she's up from real trauma. She might just be over-exaggerating stuff and maybe it's real to her. I don't know. Maybe we'll hear some stories later. But right now, I'm not seeing any of the stuff that we were forewarned about. You know, this crazy Lindy. Or maybe she'll come out later. But I'm looking at Miguel's calm demeanor. And I'm thinking he can handle Lindy. I think he's going to be the calm to her storm. Even when that brother was trying to hem him up, talking about you don't believe in no higher power. And then the scientists, you know scientists are atheists. Most scientists are atheists. He come up here talking about, um, I don't believe in any organized religion. Um, but even on the after party, he said um, that he was forewarned by Lindy. Lindy had already warned him that, his, that the family would probably hit him up because the family was really religious but that she wasn't so religious anymore. So he was already warm, which I thought was good, which was, which was a good heads up. She was looking out for her man. So he was ready for it. He was trying to be polite. He didn't want to um, disrespect them any kind of way, but he also wanted to hold close to his values and everything like that. Um, I don't think it's a problem for Lindy. I really don't. I think, I think Lindy has already made her choice. She had a choice between um, uh, uh, somebody who loves God and, and somebody that looked like Miguel. You know what she chose? Uh, Miguel. Anyway, that's it, y'all. Watch some of my videos on the other couples, and I will talk to you later. Bye.